Hi guys, welcome back to another video of Chemistry 101, the series in which we are covering O-level chemistry syllabus. And in this video, we are going to be learning uh, the chapter methods of purification. This is the part one in which we will be looking at the separation techniques. And in the next part, we will be talking about identification of a pure substance and chromatography. So let us begin by uh, thinking what is actually a pure substance. In a general term, you might think that a pure substance is something which is clean. But when in science, when we talk about a pure substance, we mean that a substance which is made up of the particles of that substance, specific substance only. Now, how is that? Uh, for example, let us talk about pure chlorine. Now, here is a container which contains particle molecules of chlorine. Now, we can say that this is pure chlorine. Why is that? Because it contains molecules of chlorine only. While on the other hand, if it had contained let's say molecules of some other gas like oxygen now this then becomes impure chlorine impure chlorine so we can say that mixtures are impure substances uh, mixtures are impure substances and in the separation techniques or main goal would be to extract out a substance from a mixture and we do that based on the physical properties of the substances there are changes in boiling point melting point and solubility help us separate them from the mixtures now here we will be having a look at three types of mixtures mixtures of solids mixtures of solids and liquid and mixture of liquids let us begin with mixtures of solids in the mixtures of solids let us discuss the first case in which we have a solid which is insoluble in water and a solid which is soluble in water for insoluble solid let us take for example silicon dioxide for insoluble solid let us take silicon dioxide for example and for a soluble solid let us take sodium chloride and we have a container with a mixture of both of these that is NaCl plus SiO2 and we have to separate them what we would do is we would add water into it and then we will stir the solution then we will stir the solution what would happen is sodium chloride being soluble will dissolve and SiO2 uh, will be, will remain undissolved. Now what we do is we would take the mixture over here and we would pass it through a funnel with the filter paper inside. And we would collect this uh, residue and we would collect the filtrate in a beaker. And we will collect the filtrate in a beaker. Sodium chloride will pass through along with water and will be collected as filtrate while silicon dioxide will be collected as a residue on top of the filter paper. Now what we will do with residue is we would wash it with distilled water to remove any impurities and then we would dry it in the folds of filter paper for the filtrate that is sodium chloride 
if we would take uh, the sodium chloride solution and take a china dish put the solution in it and then we would heat it with a bunsen burner we would we would heat it till dryness and we would be left with powdered sodium chloride now to get crystal crystals we would have to carry out crystallization for crystallization we won't heat the solution till dryness we would heat it till saturation we would heat it till saturation and then we would let it cool down why don't we uh, heat it till dryness for forming crystals because some water is required for forming the crystals and we he, if we heat it till dryness that water of crystallization evaporates and that we don't want so therefore we heat it till saturation point now to form bigger crystals we would have to increase the time of crystallization and how then we how can we do that we would have to heat it gently for a longer period of time and that is how can you form bigger crystals now uh, that was the first case and now let's move on to the second case in which one of the solid is sublime while the other is a normal solid for the sublime solid let us take for example ammonium chloride and sodium chloride as a normal solid Now we have a mixture of both of these in a container. Now what we would do is we would place an inverted funnel on top of it. And we can place something to cool down on top of the funnel. For example, we could place cotton wool soaked in water, cold water. And then what we would do is we would heat it from the bottom. And what would happen is ammonium chloride being sublime will turn it into a gas, will turn into a gas and its vapors will go up and as it will go into the cold water, it will cool down and turn back into solid. And now let us move on to the second type of mixture, which is a mixture of solid and liquid. Now, let's say we have a mixture of a solid and liquid and the solid is insoluble in the liquid. Now for the insoluble solid, we let us take for example, calcium carbonate and for liquid let us take water as calcium carbonate is insoluble in water and this is very similar to the first case of solids which we did, we would have to simply filter this solution with we can use a funnel with the filter paper on top of it and then we could pass the mixture through it water will be collected as filtrate while uh, calcium carbonate will be collected as residue now we would wash this residue with distilled water to remove it remove any impurities and then we would dry it in the folds of filter paper and our separation is done now let's move on to the second case in which the solid is soluble in liquid so now again let's take a very simple example for the solid let's take sodium chloride and for the liquid let's take water we can either take this solution and then we can heat it in a china dish and we would left with powdered uh, sodium chloride if we heat it in dryness or if we do crystallization we would be left with crystals of sodium chloride but what does this does is that it removes it evaporates 
it evaporates all the water so the liquid cannot be collected now what we want to collect the liquid to collect the liquid we would have to perform uh, something called distillation now distillation apparatus the, now now this is distillation apparatus now here is a distillation flask which is being heated from the bottom what would happen is all the water would boil now sodium chloride has a very high melting point and boiling point uh, as it is an ionic compound so it would not uh, melt or boil what would happen is water will start to boil and at 100 degrees celsius the temperature of the thermometer would become constant for a while until all the water has boiled off now gaseous water vapors will move to this condenser where they will be cooled down and turned back into liquid and then they will be connected in a receiving beaker or flask now there are some key points to remember first is the position of inlet and outlet of water in the condenser so water is always goes in from the bottom and comes out from the top another important thing is that there is no bunk on the receiving end why there is no bunk this is because if we place a bunk over here it can cause too much pressure and can result in bursting of the apparatus and water is inserted from the bottom condenser is refilled with water and allows effective cooling now this is it for distillation and this and this is done with distillation now let us move to the third type of mixture which is a mixture of liquids in a mixture of liquids first let us discuss liquid those are that are immiscible liquids immiscible liquids means that liquids do not mix together they say separated settle over each other now a very common example is that of oil and water now if we place oil and water in a container they won't mix together oil would settle settle above water as it is less dense and won't mix as they are immiscible liquids now we can use some separation funnel for it which looks something like this this is a separation funnel now oil is above water and what is done here is that this funnel is brought above any like receiving flask or beaker or any container and then tap is opened we will allow the mixture on the bottom to come out and then we will wait all of it to come out and when we see that almost all has been when we see that all the water has moved out and only oil is remaining we turn the tap back off and then we bring it in front of another container above another container and then we open it again that is how we separate the two you know it is not 100% efficient you cannot separate them 100% but that is how it is done now let us move on to the next case where the liquids are miscible now when they are miscible liquids we have to carry out fractional distillation Now, fractional distillation is similar to the normal distillation except that it has something called fractionating column now the apparatus of fractional distillation looks something like this here is the apparatus now the working principle of fractional distillation fractional distillation is the difference in the boiling point of the liquids now what happens is we heat the mixture from the bottom now let's say that we have a mixture of ethanol and water ethanol has a boiling point of 78 degrees celsius while water has a boiling point of 100 degrees celsius when we heat it if even we heat this flask what happens is ethanol as it is a lower boiling point starts to boil and and gaseous ethanol moves up and moves to fractionating column and then moves to the condenser and then is is collected as a liquid in the receiving end now 
this fractional column actually separates the two vapors it does not allow water to move out before 100 degrees celsius this is the thing to remember now again you have to remember the positions of the inlet and outlet of water same as normal distillation and no bong is placed over here on the receiving end and uh, when at 78 the temperature will remain constant for a while at 78 degrees celsius and will rise after the first liquid the liquid with the lower boiling point here which in this case is ethanol has been collected now it will rise then we will change the flask we would put another flask over here and then at 100 degrees celsius the water would start to be collected and then it will all and then that is how separate the miscible liquid now this is it for the separation techniques now the working principle of all of these all of these techniques was basically physical properties of the substances in the mixture they are changing there are changes in their difference in boiling points melting points and solubility help let us separate them from the mixture i hope that you learned something from this video and part two will be coming out soon we will be discussing further in this chapter and um, till then goodbye